so i'll introduce first then i'll yeah uh, welcome everyone uh, good evening to everyone thank you for joining us for today's webinar today we are presenting the vfx film case study and cgi composting presented by mr sai krishnan ganeshan if you have any questions during the presentation please type them into the question box uh, in the chat box or uh, bring them up the, during the session and we'll also have time the for question at the end also or in between the sessions also today we'll be learning about the short preparation and previous so here the sir is there okay i want to introduce today presenter mr sai krishna ganeshan a digital composer at dnex chennai he has done his master's degree in vfx from the university of kent uk and started his career as a bg prep artist in prasad efx uh, which is in chennai again he was a senior composer and cg supervisor for bahubali 1 and entryan 2 which is also known as the robot 2 and previous supervisor for the bahubali 2 and kashmora currently he is working as a digital composer in dnex he was a part of many international projects too such as shark tech discovery season 3 which is available in netflix uh, death of nile which is a movie away a web series again on netflix westward season 3 on hbo stranger things 3 on netflix creed 2 a movie and the last boys which is amazon originals it is an honor and privilege for us sir to have you with us today now without further ado we will turn the time over to mr sri ganesh sir so hey. sri krishna sir it's up to you now yep thank you for your welcome uh, so first thing is i really uh, thank you guys you know to have me here uh, it's almost a year since you guys contacted me and i committed that i'll be taking a class for you people but i unfortunately missed at first time yeah again this time i got it right so thank you for having me here to take the classes to share my knowledge and my experience to the upcoming vfx artist so without wasting time let's go so I am Sai Krishna. I mean, as he has mentioned, I am Sai Krishna Ganesh. I don't think I might require a separate uh, audio for <laughs> introduction from me, but still, I need to do it. So <clears throat> today, I'll be I'll be taking care of you on uh, life in VFX. What as an artist, I generally do in day to day process, and how uh, you know onset preparation might happen, and uh, VFX case studies on and CJ compositing. So this. this uh, two days of uh, classes what it's going to give you is like you know eye opening for uh, how the industry functions first okay and if for example anyone who studies in vfx ask them what you want to become people will say i want to become a vfx supervisor so what it takes to become a vfx supervisor forget about your software tools and stuff your mindset your experience matters to become a vfx supervisor but to even make a vfx supervisor what really matters what Uh, it is required in terms of direction uh, talking with the director how you require it to you know put it across to the team and manage it so we'll be discussing upon that so yeah as he has mentioned i am sai krishnan and uh, i worked in projects and uh, like uh, in domestic like bahubali to be named one and two and robot 2.0 which is pretty much everyone knows about it but there are a lot of domestic projects i have worked upon and um, and i work as a lead compositor in dneg at present um, so all the shows he has already mentioned it i no need to keep on going and mentioning those so yeah this is about me in general uh, as you mentioned i did my education back in uh, uk at university of kent my work experiences varies from 2013 to now and um, Uh, in fireflick creative studio is what i started major of my career thanks uh, to bring up saying i work in prasar also but it was like a uh, you know um it's a good experience but i just been there for 3 to 4 months so i didn't put it in my uh, you know here but yeah that's why i started as a bg prep artist but my most of my life were in fireflick creative studio back at hyderabad and um, i moved on to being an on set supervisor for a particular project in axel media and i was a lead composer at bot vfx chennai and lead composer dnet now and uh, let's these are the credits as he mentioned there are a lot of projects i have worked on i am really happy to share with you the knowledge what i gained on so 
let me move on so yes so this is where it, i'm going to start my classes with so first thing you all you know uh, start off your career uh, it could be any vfx studio you might go on from now on after you finish the course but always from my personal experience cultivate the friendship um it, it's really really matters because um when you cultivate the friendship you might have a different interest whereas your friend will have a different interest in the same industry and it's really important to have a cross shared knowledge the reason is i am being a compositor and one of my friend is a light artist right so what happens is i used to talk to him and say like hey man this there is a something like this why don't you do it test and show me the result i'll do something in comp because i have something to explore it and what happens being having that kind of a friendship with your friends you will start to share your knowledge from your department to another department and he will teach you something else and what happens it keeps you motivated very high the reason i put it is because this is also very important for you to grow much more faster pace for example this is what when we are studying in back in uk and this is where i have my friends back in india we sitting me in chennai uh, almost we got the same team and there are a lot of people who who were there but i don't have it in the photo but if i generally see this guy is more like a game developer and this guy is purely into virtual reality and developing in terms of for medical so what happens here is every day when you used to chat in a month's time like to have a touch up when we have uh, you know general call we share about each and everyone's experience what's happening in the film industry i'll be talking about he will talk about what's happening in the game industry and he'll tell like what art is required for the game then i say like oh wow that's something you guys are doing and we want something like this in the vfx and you know what trust me there are a lot of technologies that came from the gaming to the vfx so when you have someone like that you know you can actually touch up and say like what it is required for you to move forward so always always cultivate the friendship between yourself it could be a lighter it could be uh, it could be an animator artist it could be it could be someone who is doing a modeling but it will help you to understand how the shot starts how the shot ends so always cultivate the friendship start from your college your buddies will be someone going top somewhere it required so being good friendship always matters yeah so as i discuss friends keeps you motivated so please cultivate the friends friendship also helps in knowledge share teamwork discussion and brainstorming this is something very important as we move forward in the vfx we don't want to have a dumb guy sitting there and asking like uh, you know when there is in in depth of discussion happens how to make the shot sellable we use a term called sellable or convincing or creative how to make it work so it could be a rubbish of idea but out of 1000 ideas one idea we pick but it's always important to share what senior brain just tell hey this is what i feel when i discuss about the shot this is what i feel might work this is what i feel it's work it's okay but it needs required you to open up and talk to your fellow fellow beings when you work or when you are working with your in your, in your uh, what do you call co projects among your friends right now in your college it's always good to share and don't don't stop that when you go to the stu studios because i have seen a lot of people who in in the interview they say like you know what i have done my team we used to do a lot of team work blah 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 in the interview they say and they say when you put it on the on on the execution wise on the day one we can understand after a month yes you, we wanted you to speak out what's in your mind for the short then even after two months three months people generally don't share because they feel insecure like what if if i ask something if i don't know what if if i you know what i tell the idea is something a crap so nothing of such vfx is a one of the industry where people listen even to the least least who is joining the reason is even if you have one one month experience we listen to it the reason at the ultimate we are doing a this project or this short for the audience correct it's just from the audience point if someone says what you're doing is a mistake i didn't feel this is suits in it matters to the artist it matters to the supervisor because we are presenting to the audience so you are a good judgment so please be open ears to whoever comes and tells you the feedback as you grow up that's also very next thing is very important now when i talk about you have to raise the question give your feedback same way when go is when you go up in in the level of whatever you are in supervising level or the lead level when someone from one month here 
guy and says like you know hey this is wrong i feel uh, sai the approach is wrong i have a better idea please listen to it the reasons i have a ten- tendency and even the lot of leads even i work with lot of cross site supervisors they have amazing patience and amazing skill to listen to you they will listen what you have as a solution and they'll really say yes it works or they say it will not work for this because of this reason but it will open up a conversation it will open up they shall i mean the, what you call this sharing of what their experience it means to that so it's always important in industry even if you are a first month or a first week guy or you are 20 years old guy in industry please discuss please talk please be patient to listen to your team and of course it's a team game so we require all the team to be more vibrant yeah so so as we discuss in general the reason why i want to narrate from myself is because that's why i thought you know i have been like you guys one among like a student then i started my career then it was a rough patch the earliest struggle then i moved to the next position so how it happened to me the reason is i have learned lot of steps so if i'm going to share that with you guys it's going to help you guys really in a quick time that to you know not do the mistakes what i have committed so early days of struggle yes as 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 in any industry we have seen this like you know like a no way excuse uh we have to struggle a lot in early days of efx um honestly speaking the first time after spending a lot of you know dollars or i mean the pounds you spend in uk I came back here i joined in the sub efx and the first month salary what i got was 5000 honestly saying it was 5000 and the people at the home they were like what you been studying there and it's like more course and you are you are getting 5000 and when i did my bsc i i got an offer from lnt it was like around 20000 and it's like you got a job there for 20 and you're working here for 5000 this is this is something it's not supposed to be taken but the passion matters so i started off with 5000 yes it it was paining but it's good to start i was actually i was having no work after coming from uk so uh, i was sitting in the system working 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 self developing the knowledge looking at the tutorials do it and uh, that's why i learned in prasad and what happened is failures but i got to learn more first thing how the shot comes inside the industry how the shot goes out of the from the studio this is very much important i have learned the prasad vfx and thanks to them and i moved on to firefly and that's where my entire career started to grow much faster than uh, than what it's supposed to be uh, it was more sleepless nights i had in the firefly but it was more fruitful for me the reason is i joined there as a roto artist uh, but i never done a roto there honestly <laughs> because the day i joined i was yes they put me in the roto project i was doing roto i was really bad because i want to be a compositor but they put me in a roto saying like you know this is the first step of being a composer i said okay let me do it but but i know my skill it's not for me i was doing it and eventually what i saw is there was a project called linga i hope you know so about it so what happens during the project linga is people are trying different methods to make projecting art to look young and there was traditional methods where you know you get uh, a footage where uh, you have to do the frame by frame painting on the character and run the shot out that's one method and there is another method what is it you have a camera tracked and you have your match move or a match machine for the rajikant face and they'll take it up you do a projection in the uv wrap the uv and do the paint on top of it and reproject it and send the shot out these were the two methods they were testing it was an initial stage of testing projects and uh, i was seeing a couple of the artists were doing it it was something was itching me saying like like i should give a try i was not meant for doing some other job something like this kind of r and d excites me then i then over the night i sat i took the footage i started to check what's exactly happening then i understood what the uh, the client requirement is then i went on to the google i checked few of the references like for example ads they really do like blemishes clean up the wrinkles clean up all the double chin then i was checking how they even do it then i got a supervisor who worked on the project like in ads 
I went to him, contacted him, linked it. I said, like, I am like a learner. I I have a project like this to do it. Can you help me out? I didn't say the project of movie, but I said I have my personal project that I need to do it. Can you help me out in guiding me how to do it? Then he guided me to one of the plugin, which is called as Beauty Box, which is still available in new. If you go to uh, new Foundry new official site, there is a third party plugin. If you click it. There will be a lot of third-party plugin, and one of them is Beauty Box. So he said, "Go to that, take the Beauty Box, fiddle around. You will get the results what you want, and you won't. You won't. It will be super surprised that you won't believe the quality of output. What I got is top notch. And I tried to do that in a copyrighted version, like where you know with a stencil on there, like a non-commercial version. There I tried." And uh, in my home, I took a separate image. I did it. I went to my supervisor and said, "Like, hey, see this? I have done something like this. What do you think?" Then he said, "Okay, um, can we uh, ask someone to, you know, a technical team to install it for you, uh, a demo version to check it?" Then I took a demo version. I tested it out, and I ran a footage. It went on well, and uh, and I presented the shot to him. He was super surprised to see how much time it took for me. It took almost 0.5 days, which is like half a day for me to fix the entire shot, which the compositing, the paint they are doing for almost two to three days. If it's a frame by frame paint, imagine how much time it's going to take. It's going to take a long time. So they were actually doing that frame by frame painting or reprojection. It's going to take another lot of time because tracking has to be perfect, and then your match machine has to be perfect, and then comes to your comp, then you have to view, unwrap your UVs, then repaint it and reproject it. It's like four days of work, and what it did is a half day of work. and that's where they said like how how did you make it happen then i ex- explained him what exactly happened in the process and how the tool works exactly then they were really happy then they asked what is the requirement for the tool to function like it is best because it was a long frame but i have done for a 24 frames test they asked me what it require for you to take it for a long and that's where it got to say like uh, uh, i said i require of roto Like this, this, this. I said in the breakdown, like I want like this the roto. Then he was surprised. He called the roto supervisor and said, like, you know what? He this guy required a roto. Can you give him a roto at this to get it done? Then it was a big surprise for me because I was supposed to be the roto person. And then he said, like, you are not supposed to do this now. Let's get the person who can do this for you. You concentrate on how to make it happen. So it shifted from roto to someone trying to execute it. All right. There will be some opportunity. There will be there on the way. Someone might be struggling. Someone will be like, you know, uh, there will be a spark that comes to your mind. Something I can do better in this. If you feel something like that, take that as an opportunity. Because as you prove, people will start trust you. That's the project. People trusted me much, and uh, and they gave the roto. We deliver the shot. It looks awesome. Presented. Client liked it, and there were a lot of studios competing for that quality. uh in the timeline and we deliver the project of 90 minutes of deaging on rajinikanth's face and that remains one of the best quality that we have delivered in the in the industry so far in the tamil industry and uh, that's how it started the reason is the breakthrough the breakthrough will come but breakthrough you need to find like the chance that you require for you if you find that's a right opportunity get it there there is there is no harm in failing i have seen a lot of people uh, uh the seniors generally they they feel very comfortable in doing the work what they know and when you ask why don't you try is ah it, it may not work it might work and they feel really bad about trying something new because it's something to take them so hard saying like oh i am a 15 years of experience that is if i do this if i don't succeed what happens people will think bad i am not qualified for this but nothing like that in bfx right Four years back, the structure of Unreal is not the same. Now Unreal becomes a major thing. So four years back, who I say like Unreal is not going to be a major thing. Now they are saying, oh, Unreal is a major thing. Well, the Unreal artists, let's get it. So it's it's not like you know we should never try. Please try. Open up for any plugins, any tutorials. Just give a hand because as you, this is the only industry where every year there is a change happening. Every year there is a new update is happening. Every year the new kit stuff is getting updated in different. Techniques, for example, even if you go to Shuffle Node, I don't know how many of you seen. Shuffle has been used for a long time, and there is a sub change of a Shuffle Node structure itself. Why they do it? Because they feel this is more comfortable to the artist, or this may not be comfortable, but they are ready for the change. They didn't 
keep it themselves like low profile say like oh let's not touch it because artists are using it properly no we want to give them a better more experience so that they can use our tool much more efficient so always always have a thirst to learn very much something new for you for yourself to keep yourself refreshed right so that's my breakthrough comes in and yeah kayal is one of the project where i worked where for the projections because uh, uh, over there people had a lot of struggle in terms of projection setups um projections is literally not like car and you project a mesh with different uh, render out images you have to construct it like a projection object and so you can you know drive through the camera so people are struggling to do it and this is where the experience of learning somewhere else comes in so the where i learned in uk help came to me hand i said like hey i have done something like this before in a project let me do the projection and that helped me people are saying like wow this guy is what he joined as a roto he is doing something he is doing a projection and what it gave them my understanding is like they they felt like this guy is not someone what we have thought this guy has a different skill set than the others right so when you are learning in your uh, college it's always important not to learn the tools like here okay honestly saying yes i have been in industry again we use the same uh, you call additive key for the proper getting the uh, finer details ibk the same tools we are using and you will be using so what makes the difference nothing but what makes the difference is how you see the short made the difference correct so start seeing it in a different perspective how to make it sellable again that's the point that i come through so people started seeing like something there's a potential apart from the regular job that's why they started investing investing myself on something like an r&d they gave a pro they they throw complicated stuff to me and say like hey there is something like this can you try it something like this can you try it so what happened you i have nothing to worry about failing because if i fail i don't have anything to hide because i'm fresher i failed fine but i gained a lot because that the the industry experience person they are afraid of uh, afraid of testing i am don't i am not afraid of testing because they are afraid of failure i am not afraid of failure so that's one point you need to remove always don't have a fear factor it's okay to fail but you learn just keep this in your mind always so that's where i promoted uh, you know what sorry come again like um, yeah that's why the compositing helping on projection setups helps me people to see me something different and facial aging in linga and i have also been promoted for on site supervisor like assistant supervisor to my supervisor just to check how the skin texture works uh, is there anything reference i need to take uh, on the location so it all started there and and, uh, and and the crew was really happy with how i work then one of the day where my vfx supervisor was not there and i was supposed to go when i went there was another vfx shot that's happening the parallel and they were asking me suggestion hey can we put like this can we do like this whether it works in vfx then i took the decision straight away yeah it works it will not work but understand there are a lot of people out there in the studio just with your decision they are going to work so when you take a decision you always make sure that you take it wise it's okay if it takes 15 20 minutes lag in terms of the shooting process but make sure you do that right and so your working pro progress will be less for example putting a track marker there in the screen will sort of the issue like this but if you feel oh if i hesitate to tell oh put a track mark with there oh is this guy that guy i should not keep my mouth shut the the actual the tracking guy is going to spend a lot of day saying like the track is not fitting for me the parallax is not coming i don't know where the projection plane is so a lot of stuff will happen because of one mistake what I, you commit on the location so uh, that experience i have gained it here where i even though i was new i was able to handle case right my saying like no 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 sir it was no i want to be like this so that uh, you know it's easy for us to practice do this then that build him a confidence and say like okay let's do this so that's that's another break people start up to trust me and director that i was able to you know at least even to speak to the director and say what i required even though i'm not giving like how to shoot the big stuff but i was able to tell how what is required in a basic level so which is very important to start your communication Yeah, and the last breakthrough which I got was the stereo compositing pipeline for 2.0, and this was like super uh, successful in terms of Indian project. Uh, Shrinivas Mohan sir, who uh, I owe him a lot in the industry. He is the one who got me in the industry in 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 domestic. 
So when we are testing it, I was the one who derived the pipeline for the 2.0 compositing pipeline, how the form structure has to be. It's not just for the Firefly, it's just for uh, Firefly in general in terms of a client. Uh, Senior Osmohan is from the client side. So whatever I proposed to him, he liked it. He pitched into whichever studios in domestic like Prasad and others. He pitched in and said like, this is the pipeline required for compositing. So that's another breakthrough which I got it. So always get your stuff learned. Keep learning, you will get a breakthrough very easily. If you're stuck in there, you will not see it because opportunity will, will be, you will be able to see. But if you're not aware of what you have to do in that opportunity, you cannot utilize it much better. So please, please start learning, start to start. It's okay to fail. As I say, it's okay to fail. Yeah. Then comes the big Bahubali. So once all the stuff that happened, uh, the Bahubali was there on the floor, like a previous Bahubali part one. And, uh, we are supposed to go for Bahubali, uh, you know, on location shoot, and uh, we have a footages now on the hand, and they want someone of a sequence supervisor to handle it. And there were a lot of seniors on the team to run the show very easily. There were a lot of seniors on the show, and uh, I am thankful to my supervisor, uh, Sanat, who was in Firefly. He said to me, like, I want you to handle a sequence. It's a simple sequence. Try to handle it. It has only 15, 20 shots. Can you handle it? It all started with 15, 20 shots, and eventually I ended up handling 100 shots in, this, in the entire movie, which is something I was ever never dreamt of that could happen to me. And uh, I was not sure what the sequence supervisor will be doing. I was not sure how the team will respond to me uh, because I was not delivered like a full comp file. I was always like someone who gives a solution, uh, understand the visuals, uh, and uh, fix a look for the frame and give to the artist and artist will take it forward. Now, this one, like completely, you know, I was thinking how I need to convey to the artist and I need to run a team and this is something going to be more crazy on me, but it went eventually smooth with the support of the team and uh, with the, uh, with the su other supervisors because lighting, they have a supervisor, comm, they have a supervisor, everyone to take someone like me as a sequence supervisor to co collaborate over that time around when I was 24 years. They were able to you know, talk to me so politely and tell like, hey, Sai, this is what you expected, right? So this is what it is. What else you want me to do? So it was very nice. But again, this again, a big breakthrough where I handled five sequence and over 100 shots. And this is coming up as a case study tomorrow. And I'll be presenting you guys how I deliver the Bahubali. So which you can, you know, I'll be sharing this insights tomorrow. Yeah. So let's come back to the VFX. Uh, in terms of the process in VFX. So, as in general, in, uh, I don't know how many of you have aware of uh, uh, the, I am very sure pre-production, production, post-production post -production is very much, people will know it, but what comes under what and uh, how the studio functions. So, there are a lot of stuff to happen. And uh, trust me, I have not learned this back in UK. I know pre-production, post-production, I mean, post-production, but I have never known what are the stuff that comes in. Oh, there is a something called as previous. I was never aware of it. But after coming here, I, have, I was aware. So I want to give an insight of what's happening in the VFX so that you guys will be so clear because a lot of departments are open, a lot of, lot of departments out there. I don't want you guys to stick with comp or lighting or modeler. There are a hell lot of the departments. You can pick it because everyone cannot be filling in one shoe. You might have your own shoe. So I'm just putting it out there for you guys to see it. Take it from there what you guys want to become. So yeah, pre-production. So in terms of pre-production, uh, we all know how the pre-production starts is with the script. So we receive the script in for the VFX uh, in this VFX supervisor will receive the script and it will be very confidential with the people who he trusts with and we, we have a, a, a place where we can read it and we read the script and uh, as a, as a, a previous supervisor, this is where the previous supervisor comes in and the VFX supervisor will start breaking down the script into the act. So what we say is that, okay, this is what it is. Let's break down the chart. So what is the element required for the previous? What is element required for the for the script, basically? 
they expecting a crowd yes we require a cg crowd here oh yeah we require uh, for this example if it's a scene where it's animal oh we require animal so we need to do a previous what kind of a lens might suit and what kind of uh, for the for the for the environment and uh, what what is the look and feel of it so we need to do a lot of study based upon the script okay and uh, the best thing what we have done is you can see it in online interview where rajmouli would have said himself like uh, uh, uh we have uh, in, when during the pre production of uh, bahubali uh, people asked him a questions like what bahubali eats where where bahubali generally you know uh, be there in general and what is his favorite sport uh, so what happens this is th this was like like more like if, if people might think like it was not relevant questions but what happens there was questions good like this and uh, when that was breaking down it it was very easy for us to see how bahubali himself like a person okay he like these kind of a sports he is wild guy or he is a calm guy so this will help us to understand more in terms of a script you need to read the script but there are a lot there are a lot of stuff that goes behind the character design so when you know what he eats what kind of a uh, uh, sports he plays what he generally communicates who be with that defines the character so that is more important so script it's not just about location and what we do it's also about character definition this this character is defined like this so break down and then we have a storyboard so once you have done with the script what is required people go for a storyboarding conveying the scene whether it is conveyed properly what is it framing it checking storyboard people generally know it and concept art this is where the people start to do it like concept art where uh, you might define a scene for example uh, to take that uh, um okay there is a um, teacher coming inside the classroom okay and it's like uh, let's take the scene like somewhere like uh, soul or movie like full 3d movie i'm talking about so how the feel of the look should be now the question starts what is the age of the teacher okay so now what kind of a dress she wears so all this comes in terms of the script breakdown in terms of storyboarding and that's where the concept art comes like okay this is the mood board now so the classroom should be somewhere like this like modernized what is it the concept based upon the story you design it and what could be the team team for the color palette you design the color palette and so that you know what kind of a dress could fit in there uh, what is the mood can fit in there so concept art is not just about scribbling it it's also about how the how how good the visual can be before even going for the shoots so that's what people do in terms of concept art and previous it's nothing but an animatics where it is very important when you are dealing with the cgi um, shoots uh, puli murugan was one of the study where uh, or even bahubali was one of the study where we have a lot of cg to make so i'll be showing tomorrow again how we choreograph some of the sequence but on previous uh, we have to be very careful on terms of camera blocking uh which is very important and we need to separate it like an act wise uh, so what is an act so i'll just quickly uh i don't get an annotation to here or i will find annotation to later but yeah is there any idea guys know how why is annotation to be made here okay cool so where are we actually sorry chandan we production you were talking about yeah okay okay, okay cool previous right so in search of tool i lost the concept <laughs> so yeah um so what is more important for us in terms of previous is blocking camera blocking you need to know about absolutely you know about what kind of a lens the people are going to shoot ari how the aspect ratio is going to work or if it's red what is the aspect ratio they're going to shoot lensing what kind of a lensing will shoot inside the characters that has to be pinpoint you need to be very sure you have to work closely with the dop and so that this is going to be a bible for you when on set supervision is going to be there 
I need to tell them, hey, what this is what the shot we have done, and it's going to be something like this, and the pillar is going to be coming here in here, which is properly designed. It's like five feet high, so if you put it, it will block. So we want it to move a little left, right. All these things you have to decide based upon the previous. So previous is more or less like seventy percent of your Bible. So yeah, and scouting. Scouting is nothing but going to on location, going taking the references. Um, for Puli Murugan, we went on a recce where the forest they're going to shoot. So we need to understand how the forest environment is, what kind of a terrain it is, like whether it has a lot of tree stuff or the down or what is it. And we also want to check what type of a tiger they're going to use it like. What is the reference they have it? So case study the tiger, what exactly it does. So it's very important to do the scouting. It happens. It happens in all the VFX movies. Go for the recce, check for the scouting, all the locations. Uh, the if it's a character involved, what is the characters, or if it's a costume they're going to wear, we need to check the costumes what they are going to do because it could be extension of the costumes where uh, if there is a wings there and there is a something popping up, you need to make sure that costume designer keeps the two stands there so that you know it doesn't uh, on the day of shoot it's not something you need to tell the hey we need to do this now we cannot shoot this. so always go prepare and we need to do the scouting right so it all happens and then a production so in terms of production generally. Uh, we have on-set supervision, uh, and on-set supervision supervisor or supervision is basically it's all about the plan, the shots on the day. Uh, even though you do your previous right, your short breakdowns right, uh, due to the technicalities, for example, crane may not go in like that, or the chimney may not go like that. So there'll be a lot of technicalities which will challenge as a suit supervisor, but you still need to execute the shot. So you need to make a stitch shot, or what is it? You need to sit with the director or sit with the DOP or if it's a stunt sequence, you need to convince us your stunt master saying what he requires and convince him and say and say, hey, yeah, I got your point. This is what it is complex. Can you put like this in the effect so we can solve it? Or oh, if you want this, then we need something like this as a framing. We cannot go in this framing. So you need to convince the director, entire crew basically, and take a decision and shoot the plans. And that's how you answer supervision once. And you have a shoot the plates. Plates are nothing but your clean plates, element plates, whatever it is, which I'll be showing at the last uh, when we are discussing on what, how to, you know, be an onset supervision role. What is it going to take like? And motion capture. This is generally in India. Uh, it is, it's not uh, that great. Uh, but yeah, moving forward in Hollywood, yes, motion capture plays a very important role. Uh, there are a lot of tutorials available online. I did a project for motion capture, but it was not that successful. I'm still trying to learn a lot in terms of motion capture. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, and data wranglers. So, there's a two questions in terms of shoot. One is on search supervision, and then there has a data wrangler. So, data wrangler is mostly is like more like, like collecting the camera reports, how to collect the reports, what are the information should be there in the camera reports. I'll be telling you guys, and measurements, uh, which is very important. For example, if the camera, is traveling across a distance. It's very important to know what is the start point, how much it traveled, so that it's very we can give that information to the tracking guys. It's easy for them to judge that depth, whether they can find in Maya, whether the camera travels in exact distance, what is it? And or it could be from uh, uh, down to up, the crane movement. You need to know your origin point if it's like zero zero or if it's from the ground level, it is two feet high, and as it goes, it's like seven feet. That is the distance you need to measure and tell to them saying, hey, you know what? This starts from three feet high and it goes to seven feet. So in between is a short travel. So it very, it's very important for the camera trackers to know it because layout is going to be absolutely in the zero zero world where ground is zero zero. Your measurement of three feet is going to be the actual Maya camera three feet. It's a real world rep replica of this stuff. So your measurements have to be precise. And HDRA and Chrome balls and sketch scan data. So set scan is available in India. Um, Lidars, uh, Makuta is very successful in doing it. One of the studio. And uh, even if it's not, it's okay to shoot more as much as panorama as possible so that photogrammetry can be delivered and we can uh, create the sets. And Yep. So next comes the post-production process in VFX. Generally, it's all about place, uh, plate analyze. Plate analyze is nothing but getting the edit, whether repo is matching. Portrait. Sometimes what happens is like uh, repo, uh, shot will be like for uh, 350 frames and they will ramp to 25 frames. Now, when you receive the clip, you will receive for 200 frames. But it's very important to understand whether are we going to work for 200 frames and then ramp it or 
it's easy to ramp it first and then work on the shots. So generally, how the pipeline works is camera track will happen in the full range, 200 frames. And roto, paint, everything happens in the smaller range, which is 25 frames. For example, 200 shot to 25, people will work on 25 frames. Only the camera department will work on the extended ranges, right? And the comp will work on the 25 frames. So that makes the things easy because when you ramp it fast, camera will not able to track it as fast as the, the software controls will not work. So that's how the production goes. So you need to understand how the plate reacts, what is required in the plate and uh, task breakdown and schedule. Generally, uh, this is where the VFX supervisor or the sequence supervisor comes in the picture with the other uh, department supervisors. He will break the task down and say like, hey, this task, uh, for this shot, we have roto paint uh, comp, that's it. Oh, for this shot, we have animation, we have CG renders, we have uh, and comp. So we need to break the task and you need to schedule it properly saying how much the bandwidth for the shot can go in comp, how much the bandwidth can go in lighting. So it all comes from the supervisor. Artist level, no way. And execution. Execution is somewhere after you do the schedule, break down everything, it's planned. You know, supervisor have to, you know, talk with the leads and the team, describe what is the show is all about, what is the time frame. Tell them lighting, we start like this day and we're gonna end up this day. This is the execution plan, or we're gonna deliver this, this, this sequence to compound these, these, these days. This is what we have, our individual milestone. We need to achieve this. So it all comes in the execution process. And then we have a kickoff and dailies in every 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 day process, and we have a client translation feedbacks on every milestones, and we have a final edit, final delivery to DA and edit. So this is like a general process. Now, let's know the department. So in between of this, from here on, it's going to be more intense. So if you have any doubt, even before this, if we can clarify it. And from now on, it's more like VFX topics. So this is like a prelude for you guys. Anything to be asked, you can put it in chat box or I can continue. Anyone, anything? Guys, doubts? No, sir. Okay, cool. Yes. Let, me, let me continue. If you have anything, just put in the chat box. I have my chat messenger on so I can you know, see it. I can stop and respond to that. So when you talk about the industry, there are a lot of hierarchy in the industry and these are the general stuff. So it starts with the client director then we have a client supervisor and then we have a studio supervisor and in the studio supervisor we are talking about uh, under the studio supervisor we have a cg supervisor we have a vfx producer and we have a comp supervisor so these three will be mostly directly contacting point is vfx supervisor right so what happens to cg supervisor he is the responsible for the 3d development and approach it starts from modeling texturing shading lighting Everything is going to be in charge. It's not necessary that you should know all the department. It is necessary that he is, he is the person who can go to person at least in two departments. For example, he should be a kick-ass in lighting. And if you are kick-ass in lighting, you'll know about how your textures has to come, how your, uh, uh, you know, uh, the model, what can be done in model, what can be done in texture. That has to come in because these two departments will always say, hey, we can do it this because if we give a bump, it will work in texture. It not be the case. It has to go back to you know model and sculpt it. So CG supervisor has to know at least two of the department very very at ease so that he can uh, you know uh, get the works done. And um, yeah, so under the CG supervisor we have environment supervisor. He'll be the person who will be you know taking care of the environment. Uh, what sort of a land, for example, take uh, uh, Jungle Book. There will be environment supervisor for sure because. He'll be the person deriving what sort of environment, how it has to be. Um, he'll be designing it. Even even a tiny rock to the sand, to the biggest rock on the cliff, it has to be precisely done in terms of a scale. So it's very important. So environment will be taking care of the environment supervisor. Crowd, crowd is another stuff. Um, it, uh, it defines upon what sort of a crowd layers that you require. L, LD, 100, 200, 300. So you need to define what kind of uh, actions they'll be having. This all generally gets from the VFX supervisor. He'll be talking about the sequence and say, hey, you know what, we have a crowd in this and probably we'll see it at the far. So it's not that mesh if we require. It has to be low poly, but it has to be, it has to be, it should not be compromised in terms of texture so that it doesn't look like low poly model. So that's something we need to talk, care about. And we have a CFX artist. So CFX is nothing but cloth fur. So 
uh, if you are talking about uh, uh, what's the best example? Yeah, for example, Tintin. It's a full CG characters, but if you see the cloth of the coat, it will it will flutter in the air. So those are the full CG shots, but you still see the cloth is having animation. And if you see apes, you have a fur animation. Fur is, plays a very important role together in them. So we have a separate team called CFX, which will be under CG supervisor control. But uh, this will have uh, their own supervisor, CFX supervisor, because it's a department which is crazy. And we have a lighting. Again, it comes under CG supervisor. And we have animation and FX. If, even though all this has their individual supervisors, they all report to CG supervisor. So CG supervisor will work with all this department supervisor to get the work done on CG. And then we have a VFX producer. So basically VFX producers is basically for terms of bidding and scheduling. He, is the, he or she is the person who will talk to the client with the VFX supervisor and say, hey, this is the budget, this is the bidding, this is the schedule for us, this could be done. So he'll be basically, he'll be monitoring all these guys. He'll be going to the VFX producer like, Hey, this is not working. It's taking more longer than what we expect. We are crossing the budgeting. Can you cross check the CG supervisor whether it is required or composite supervisor required? So he is the person who will be taking care of how the show runs basically. And there is a um, um, under him. There are under him or her. There are a lot of people who will be working on artist manager, line producer, and project monitor. It depends upon the companies and companies. Their roles is a little bit different. Uh, and we have a compositing supervisor. And composite, composite supervisor is responsible for the final delivery and the function across the departments. So uh, the departments comes under him as like a DMP. In general, uh, most of the companies have the DMP supervisor, but they will relate with the composite supervisor. They will be having a close-up with the composite, compositing supervisor. The reason is there will be a lot of projections to be done. So compositing supervisor will tell them how they require the layers. So DMP comes under him. MGFX comes under him, Roto, Paint, and of course, Compositing comes under him. So Compositing Supervisor basically will do the quality check on following departments when it comes inside. Uh, there are, okay, Saidya Shaha from VFX Pune. There are two different storyboards for director and makers and VFX Pune. Uh, generally, Yes, uh, from the director's point of view, he would present you the basic storyboards from their idea what they have it. But it's always VFX Studio uh, would take it forward uh, because some things are practically, you know, will not be possible to execute in terms of budget and everything. So they have to come up with a plan, say like, you know what, you are doing something like this, but we are seeing a scope which is beyond this. So come up with a better solutions. So both ways the storyboard works. And uh, finally, most of the times, studio storyboard is what functions better because at the end, and at the end of the project, we are the one who is going to execute it in terms of previous. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, so let's talk about the departments in terms of creative. So, as earlier, storyboard comes under pre production, layout comes under pre production, concept. Yes, concept also comes under pre-production. Previous comes under pre-production and editorial comes under pre-production. Now, uh, this is generally like taken in a loan from here. For example, your layout artist will not be someone different. He'll be someone from the modeling and texturing department will be pitching here and doing a layout, right? And the concept artist is, as we see in a pre-production, it's a separate artist, storyboard is a separate artist, but layout is something which they'll get a loan from the production, which is model texture. They'll work here and they'll jump out of the project from the pre-production. And editorial is important because that's where you do the cuts and show them as a sequence. So editorial comes in the pre-production. And in production, most of the scenario, uh, this in most of the studio will come in post-production or depends on the project, it come in production. The reason is, for example, when I went for, for uh, uh, Panamagan, we started the production of model, texture, rig, cloth, and fur in the production stage, which means when the shoot was happening parallelly, we were doing this in here. We got the reference of the tiger, what they require. Uh, we, uh, so it's easy for us to model. It's easy for us to do the texture, rig, and do the basic test with the cloth and fur because it takes almost one or two months to get it settled. By the time the shoot is getting wrapped up of the sequence or two, three sequence together, it's easy for you to see, you know, close this one off. So that it's easy for us also to present to the director. 
director in even before going for the post production get them log let them know do this is what you are looking at in terms of output so you plan your shoots based upon this so it's very important to work parallelly with the director and get your stuff out so that's where the production here is the department so modeling texture rig cloth and fur is a different production and you have post production where editorial comes in post production to check the edit trams and stuff and you have match move matchmation layout animation look development fx light environment roto paint and compositing i hope just by the name you might you guys will be aware of what are the departments are uh, available here uh, but most of times when i see the people in the interview uh, um, when i had a, had a chance to you know recruit people in companies in domestic when you ask what do you want to become people will say i want to be a comp artist or they will say i am pressure so put me in paint or roto okay and people will say i want to become a lighter yes some men say like i want to become a model artist but none of them touch the texture rig cloth fur fx none of them none of them to be honest there are very very hand picky out of 100 you will see two people applying for a different approach so it's always important for you guys you know uh, check where your interests are right uh, it it cannot be compositing always you might be very good in terms of fx fx requires a lot of uh, knowledge on uh, skills in coding uh understanding your python as well or c++ script where you know a simple random expression will give a good output in terms of uh, fx so if you are good in terms of you know uh, knowledge of analytical knowledge it's good to try the fx right whereas for look development is someone who has to take care of uh, texture uh, model and the lighting that's where it comes under the look development so look development is basically fixing the look for the sequence this you may not join immediately this you might need to go to the process of lighting artist then you come to the look development basically and then we have your uh, animation yes you can start as a fresher in terms of animation and you can start start as a match move as a fresher layout artist yes as a fresher look development you cannot start as a fresher fx you can start as a fresher lighting you can start as a fresher environment and dmp yes you can roto paint compositing obviously so only department which you cannot start as a fresher is look development so try to if you want to be a look development artist who is very much you know i need to fix a single frame or a sequence where i i create a bible and that's it for the sequence then i move to the next sequence i create a look and i give it to them then i move to the next one if you are someone has an aesthetics looks on the visuals go for the lighting if you are someone who is so knowledge in terms of technicality analytical skill problem math solving problems go for the fx that's all i would tell it whatever passion is for you go for it but these are the departments over here yeah so in this of process and departments any any questions for you guys guys please ask question any doubts is there either you can speak or you can write it in the chat box yeah uh, i would say it could be it could be very simple question but please ask because the reason is uh in maybe in this year or next year or after this you going to go for the industry correct and this is what you going to face on to the day to day process and uh, you'll not able to have a time to figure it out so it's better to start questioning here as i said question is more important so ask question even it's a simple thing please yeah true guys any doubt any even it is a silly or simple question please ask so i assume no doubt so let's go dig deeper now this is where um no one tells you this is where i learned from the supervisors where i worked let's dig deeper what is important to be an artist what is important to be a supervisor what skills you require the process how you start it off matters uh the process the word is someone so something so common uh and someone uses it uh i hope you know the person can anyone guess it the word process if you follow ipl if you follow some indian cricketer he names the process very very you know often 
okay cool it is doni just a lighter note yeah the process is very important in terms of any anywhere you go any uh, work you do uh, uh, what you put is matter than the result you put yourself 100% dedicated to that to put yourself learn that give you 100% there and if you still failed a bit it's okay because you put your 100% you will eventually get it but put your process right so in the industry we have something called as process so when we have a script in the process of vfx industry this is what i have learned to be a successful person uh, there is this content uh, we'll talk like this the, uh, we'll take the same example uh, a teacher enters inside a class and students were silent and uh, because of what we'll decide it later so this is the process this is the narration of the first line what is important is uh, as a supervisor if you are becoming it's very important to understand the narration yes there is a teacher there is a room the teacher is coming in. yes what is it how the narration is going on that is very important in terms of a movie because director is trying to tell a story so what is the narrational goal it's very important so once you have a narration goal in it then comes a wish emotional goal what kind of a emotion that you can give that's why i said students are shocked that's an emotional goal so shock how it can be for what purpose they are shocked whether teacher was supposed to be absent and so she came back so students are shocked or there is a change of teacher so the students are shocked what makes them or for example the the, the teacher might be absent so some other teacher might have come in so is that a is that a reason why uh, the emotion is for the students are shocked and emotion also goes to the teacher so it's very important to break the script in terms of the narration what it is required as a movie and what is the emotion in the scene and what is the visual in the scene correct when i talk about it yes you have a girl coming and the teacher coming in then you have an emotion to play okay what why they are shocked you narrate the part so that that's where you start to give your expression on the anim animation thing oh kids how the shock uh, yes, this. so you put the narration of the emotional uh, content of the characters then you have visual how they visually good okay now the mood or oh, lighting has to be like something like this or it could be a warm light the mood light can be cold or like both of mixed what is the visual treatment that you're going to give it to look to give the up moment for the narrative and emotional goal for the scene so visual goal is also matters and that's where comes the technical goal how are you going to achieve it either you're going to take your maya and put like oh i'm going to do this uh, the character in um, you know um, mud box i'm going to do this in maya in doing this i'll do the lighting in katana i'll do this in i'm sorry uh, yeah claris i'll get it out in uh, comp in nuke and even in that each and every department have to go and dig how to approach it technically so let's go in reverse now so each and every department even for the shoot there is a director he will have a narration goal correct and there is an emotion which is what actor is performing it correct visual goal is something what dop is performing it technical goal is what what all these three guys wanted technical team is there for example for the dop he have his assistant he have his light man right so everyone is actually working for the visual goal technical aspect how to make the emotion works dop works on it and technically this guy works on it so in any task you take it from on location from the direct this four things is applicable to everyone director it applies to the vfx supervisor it applies to the artist also it applies right so this is very important and also for the every individual department it applies right for example if you break down in terms of a department you take it in terms of uh, uh modeling narrative based upon the narrative your model your uh based upon the story you're going to define the character look and then what are the emotions that going to make it based upon that you do the blend shapes and based upon that you go you do your clothing for example your textures everything depends upon what is the visual treatment for that and then you have your tool sets technical is basically all about the tool sets okay i'm going to use a mud box then i'm going to use a uh, uh, substance painter uh, or maya whatever it is the software comes inside this technical aspects and what happens generally is 
we are stuck in this code we tend to see only technical aspects of the shot when you start your career when people move forward they always see like oh okay i have this tool i can use this to do this so oh, i have this tool i can use this to do this but if you want to progress in your career you need to start thinking about this i need to start thinking towards this i am using this tool for what purpose for visually for this purpose right if i know what is the visually you wanted your technical will keep changing i'll do this inside new i'll take this i achieve the visual now when i am achieving the visual i am checking whether my emotion is correct as an artist i'm talking if i'm talking about it is correct then it automatic achieves the narrative goal so what happens is you are starting as an artist you are becoming a lead you are becoming a supervisor here correct so it's very important when you pick your shot when you are doing your shots make sure you break down what you want to do what is the goal of the shots don't start pulling out put a key here do this do that nothing understand what it is required for the shot first what is the visual is going to be first what is the mood then you start thinking of your technical aspects that's where you start to grow in reverse order i came like this but this is where most of us are stuck if you want to go here this is the ladder you need to climb so once you are here this is the zone for the director and the actor in your studio level if you can go here you are becoming a vfx supervisor any doubts on this no sir Good. Right. Let's talk about onset work brief. Yeah, I was opening it up. So, generally, uh, from my experience, I have jotted down what all the stuff onset is required about basically. so in this we going to talk about the challenges and the requirement of the location visual effects crew and guidelines for the on set work it's uh, i i would share this with uh, with uh, with your uh, with your professors so that you know you can uh, it's it's okay you can access this i have no problem it's for the students gain my knowledge no problem so i'll be sharing this document with you guys um green screen and blue screen photography and on set data and on on set we already talked about what other stuff i'll be showing the examples of what it is like and then we have post production content because on location we are also talking about the post how it's going to be approached so yeah so challenge and requirement locations in general uh, in the industry of us uh, we'll be having one vfx supervisor and he'll be having with one data wrangler and there'll be a lot of stuff to execute it. as i as i said we need to uh, sit with the director we need to sit with the dop we need to sit with the uh, if if it's a song we need to sit with the, uh, in our industry there are songs which comes with vfx so sit with the choreographer or sit with the stunt master start describing understanding plan it execute it at times you need to go and talk to the actor and say like hey what if you are doing like this it may not work it will look bad or if it could be jumping down and the wings has to come down so you might to say that hey as you jump down make sure that your hands are like this and you bring it down so that it looks like it's coordinating along with your hand if you jump like this it might look awkward because your hand will be like this but your wings will be like this at the back it will look bad so i want you to be like holding like this as you do that feel of you are giving it because it's going to be like this so what happens you are feeding the actor from your vfx point of view from your insights what is going to be like so it's very important uh that's the biggest challenge you need to speak up to the director the reason why is speak up because from now if you start speak up even a small questions execution uh, as you grow grow higher you need to speak to the director you need to go and convince the vfx uh, i mean uh, your dop your other person say this is works this will not work so as you speak more you get more clarity that's where the challenges that we have on location and um the requirement is basically all about preparing and gathering the data ahead of time as as possible uh, measure the sets as i mentioned gather the blueprints yes uh, when you are going for uh, some of the uh, uh, set which it's developed and we are doing extension in green screen they have it it's very important to get your uh, you know blueprints right 
there will be art director to whom we need to sit with and tell like hey you have done the set can i get the measurement of this chair you have a blueprint of it can you give that so you need to take the blueprint and you need to get the measurements from him proper live measurements and get it done cross check it so sets once they develop you need to get the blueprint of the area so they might say this to this area is 100 feet boys and here we having the set which is 50 feet and this is like uh, 10 feet and we have the depth and we have this character here and we have the stage here so once you are doing the blueprint this is the exact blueprint that you need to replica in terms of in the 3d the measurements so that when you put your camera in terms of layout it matches to it properly right so even if you slightly you know miss any of the data it's going to go for a toss you cannot do it in terms of sequence run so get a blueprint right and set your blue screen markers yes there are a lot of uh, uh, stuff where people used to put a lot of track markers where it is not necessary for example if this is the uh, oh why i'm not getting let's open my shop oh. yeah so i'm it's opening for i'm opening the photoshop so in between so what happens is in general people have uh, you know placing the track markers it could be only 50 by feet 50 feet of uh, the the for example this is the green screen that you are talking about right and uh, people generally i put up the show so people generally tend to put a track marker this close which is not necessary so you need to be very careful when you are doing your uh, you know where you are placing the markers which is very important and there are a lot of people who puts like here one marker and here one marker what happens when the camera pans between these two so it's very important how you break it down it is it may not be necessary and some shoots you might require a plus track marker in some shoots you might require a square box just this will do the trick or some you will have the circle and it need to have this and so there are a lot of track markers available so which one you need to use it it's very important so as a shoot supervisor it's very important for you you know keep it handy in all all sort of track markers or inform the uh, uh, the art director well had one saying like i need these kind of track marker for this sequence place in every 3 feet distance i need this in 3 feet distance i need like this and this horizontally and vertically so that they will put it across for you so very important what sort of a track marker you use and what is the backdrop whether you're going to be blue screen or green screen you need to decide before the shoot if it's a night sequence yes go for the blue screen or what if it's a, a green land oh go for the blue screen or uh, you need to plan if it's a day oh you can go for blue screen because mostly the wavelength will be more and the sky will be more like blue you can blend it off properly you can take the information properly so it's very important to talk with the people or if the character is wearing a lot of blue dress then you need to force to go with the green screen it's very important to talk with the costumes uh, the director understand what sort of a dress what sort of things they're going to use it so you can you know plan the shoots ahead not on the day of the shoots so very important construct the reference image or reference objects and transport the cards for the production yeah this is what i was talking about on the blueprints so that the production will start working on the uh, set designs and we have data collectors something called as wranglers which i was talking about which may vary from company to company camera documents i am going to show what are the information that you should be collecting if you are going as a data wrangler and uh, yeah visual effects crew um so we have a small we should have a 
generally VFX team will be a small and they'll be working on the productions and make sure the shots are, uh, the name naming of the shots are correct. Uh, that that uh, the, uh, you need to take a reference of the light setup, whether those are all taken correct. So that's how, uh, you know, the VFX crew functions, the document will be, uh, if I go point by point, that it will go for a long time, so just sorting it out and you will be having this document for you to read it properly. And um, yeah, guideline is make, making sure that you need to be more professional. You cannot be, you know, uh, uh, relaxing. You cannot be uh, thinking somewhere else because uh, there are uh, 50, 60 people on the day of location, 60 man days you're talking about. We are waiting for your decision. So you need to be more active in taking your decisions. And um, and it's, it's very important, you know, uh, you need to be more humble, uh, more professional in terms of your word, even though the dad is more like, you know, shouts, screams, but you should never lose your temperament. You should be more humble enough to understand what they require and make it satisfy for them. And uh, it is very important, you know, most of the data wranglers, uh, yeah, that, that's the time they say, sir, we need to put, uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, it's okay where, you know, uh, to communicate properly, but after the shot, or you need to be silent and indicate it as much as, uh, as quite as possible when there is a shoot happening. And if you have something on your doubts to go on, please ask your supervisor before you, you know, take actions, which is very important. And uh, uh, this is in general terms. And we have a green screen and blue screen photography. Uh, before we go further, do you know why we use a green screen and blue screen, not the red screen? People generally ask me when uh, in, in the older studios where I take classes. So we have any idea why just blue and green, not the red? Anyone can answer it? Yes, sir. Uh, because your green and blue uh, will not have the skin uh, skin shading of the color, mm -hmm. and red have the very similar to the skin and other body parts. Mm -hmm. uh, something like that. Great. So that's a good answer. Uh, actually, that's the perfect answer. In fact, uh, uh, but in terms of uh, colors, right? Red has the more wavelength, uh, but unfortunately. Uh, the software tools developed, it's all based in uh, companies outside India, and they have fairly more like a red skins. Uh, so if you pull the red key, you will take away their skin. So they have to come up with a solution and that's why blue and green. Why not uh, purple, magenta? Because these are the primary colors. In these colors, green and blue has the good wavelength. So they pick the green and uh, the blue is the next. So that's the reason if you're taking a green, uh, you will have a brighter luminance. Uh, if you are talking about the, I guess you, people will be knowing luminances, what I'm talking about. So green will have big luminances, blue will have a less luminances. So that's the reason you see more grains on the blue channel than green channel, right? And uh, when you use a green screen, you tend to have a less grains on your, sh in your uh, green plate, I mean, in the plate. If you use a blue, you might have a more grains. So that's the reason blue is very much useful when you're doing on outdoor shoots. If you're doing indoor shoots, it's better to go with the green because it will have more luminances to pull the keys out better. So uh, that's difference between blue and green when to use it. And white card for screen balancing, which is very important. This is like a tools that we used to carry. You'll have a white chart and you have a color palette. And um, this is very important to do and along with your green screen. The reason is if you can take a shot like this from the actual camera, for example, Ari or Red, whatever they're doing it, just take the shot like this in every sequence they are doing it. Give this like a template for your uh, sequence supervisor or uh, your uh, uh, team. Say like, hey, this is the colors. Now what happens? Oh, they know, okay, this is the actual whiteness. If they balance the white values to this in your scene, and if you remove the spill, you know, you can see here your original photography and you can see how the composite output will be. So you can see, this is the white balance that you need to match to the skies and everything. This is how the spill corrects. This is how the blues is, and this is how the color of the board it should be. So this will give a very huge, it may look very simple, but this will become very handy in terms of matching colors accurate. And when you're talking about photorealism, balancing the colors, this will help us a lot. So this is for white balancing, prop colors and spill test and focus charts. And this is that data I was talking about, onset data. I hope your colleague would have already given you notes on what all the stuff that you take. But this is another data that uh, if I'm anything missing, please feel free to check this. So you need to make sure what day you're shooting, what time you're shooting. The reason is after uh, uh, 
two weeks you come back to your shoot uh, after the shoot and people will be like you cannot tell oh what day i shoot because you are you can actually tell oh on the day when we shot this there is a split i need to take so it becomes very tough so it's may, obviously make sure that you mention your date and the time and your location is very important for example if you are shooting in rajmouli film city mention that rajmouli film city and mention what set for example it could be uh, bahubali set part uh, set of uh, katapa put katapa so we will know what it is like in case of weather you can mention sunny whatever it is or it can say interior shoot exterior shoot under this or if you have a reference uh, if it's a patch up shoot you need to mention on which sequence it is matching up for the patch up so so that's easy for us to refer back uh, the conditions and the slate number vfx slate generally it is important but in domestic we go with the actual clip numbers and camera very important what camera are using and what is the lens you are using what is the serial number of lens we may not get it but still if you can get it it will be great and the dop has aspect ratios what they are shooting open gate close gate make sure what you are doing it and if you are using any filter please do it because as a guys you know having a filter on front of the camera it changes the entire look of the uh, in, in, in entire change so we should be knowing what sort of filter you are using for the output to come in so it becomes easy for us to match and if they are using any other stocks mention it and what stops they are shooting what is the focus range they are using for example it could change from 10 to 35 that's the focus please mention it camera height as i was discussing if it's going from 5 feet to 10 feet or 12 feet to 43 please mention it and tilt uh, make sure that if we have uh, that, that is a uh, equipment for tilt reading which you can see what, what how much tilt is happening so we can please make note of the camera tilt and shutter you know shutter or if it goes you know how the motion blur works so it's very important to get the shutter angles right and if you have any notes by the individual supervisor or the data wrangler if you are collecting please make sure that you put your notes uh, notes is very simple uh, green screen replacement uh, on uh, with uh, 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 war background war one background and it's very very important just put what kind of a location that you are expecting it so it's very easy for uh, supervisor or the team to track it down and you can put a short uh, description it's, it's very simple jack gets into his car and delivers drives away so it's very simple short description so it's this is what the general data of the, your camera report will be consist of and this is if you can draw a chart something like this is saying like what is the distance it carries how the field of view height tilt everything like this as a chart in a drawing it's very very easy and trust me when you are going as a data wrangler or stuff you will have a good time for every shots if i take a shot and if you get your camera data uh from this shot to next shot it will take at least 10 minutes to set up the next shot from the dop side so you can note down all this data is very easy so but missing of the 10 minutes of work as i mentioned will go for 3 4 days work. so always make sure that you know when you are going as a data wrangler uh it's very important to get these data right when you have a passion for shoot, shoot surprising i'm talking about and camera report as as we discussed and lens distortions uh, lens distortions another key white information that is required every camera uh, performs a different lens distortion every lens has its own uh, distortion values to give um, so as a sequence goes it's very important to collect uh, have a grid like this every day at the end of the shoot what i generally do is every day at the end of the shoot what are the lenses we used for the day i'll be having the red codes right so i'll be noting down oh i used 16 mm I have a 16 mm, 24 mm, 24 mm, 50 mm. Yes, take those stuff and say that to the DOP, saying, "Hey, you use 16 mm, 24 mm, this one." And then you keep this chart and ask them, like, "Hey, I need to shoot a uh, lens distortion for this place." So what happens is, it will give the proper lens distortion data for you, which will be helpful on the particular sequence, right? It, it may not for, because the lens what you are using today, you are not 100% guaranteed that you'll get the same lens tomorrow. so it's very important to you know to take the lens data as then and there as on the day as possible jot it down and keep it ready and uh, that this is another track marker i was talking about i am so uh, uh, generally i use this kind of a track markers uh, so it has a lot of track points inside it to track in each and every individual corners so i generally use this than the normal plus uh, for the close up shots or mid shots i generally use this than the normal plus and uh, yeah hdri chrome balls is another important task that you need to pick it up so 
as you're seeing, this helps us to understand the light. This is a white ball, uh, uh, not the, this is the chrome ball. So what happens is this will help us to understand the light direction and it, it can use this for like a panorama images. If you can shoot a panorama, well and good. There are a lot of cameras that comes in uh, with a motorized head. If you can, most of the studios has a motorized head. So if you can have the motorized head rotation, take a panorama, beautiful. If not, at least take the chrome ball like this, each and every individual shots, take the shoots done so that, you know, it's uh, the light does know that what, how the set looks like, what are the lights they casted and they can plan their uh, shots accordingly. And this is like a white ball where you can talk about the black values, the peaks, how the white will be, how the uh, diffusion will be. So it's very important uh, for the lighters, for the developers and also for the compost to set the shots right. Uh, trust me, there are a few projects where I worked where uh, for every shot there will be a, uh, a white balance like this and there will be a chrome ball like this. So as a compound, I know, yeah, there is the light comes in. So it's better. So if I, so I know what sort of light comes in, what sort of diffuse I have it in the shots when you're putting the CG characters inside it. So please, uh, if you're on location or we are going for a VFX supervisor, have these in your mind. This is all the stuff you need to prepare for. And lighting data, as I mentioned, yes, this is another gray ball. It's for the reference. You can see how it works on. And clean plate, as, as we mentioned, clean plate is day to day process is very important. Um, if you know it's a VFX shot, uh, for example, in Pulimurugan, we had a tiger that has to go, the carrot will be running in the, in the forest. And uh, we just pull, put the camera behind the character, is running, and the tiger is in front of him. So, character will be running, camera will be running behind him. And it's very easy to say, like, oh, let's let's not do it because tiger is going to be in the front. So there's no need of clean tape. But it is very important at least to take at least a static frame of uh, clean plate. Because once you remove the character, you need to paint it out. Or if you put a tiger here, it may ask you to phrase it here, here. Then you might need to paint it out. So it's better from where you get the information. Instead of cloning, if you have a shot, uh, maybe after the shot is OK, Tell to the DOP or tell to the director, let me take a clean plate. Just uh, just the same dolly moment. It cannot be 100% precise. Just push it in, push it out. We'll, we'll take the frame where it is required. You can do the frame blending to get it right in different keyframes. So it's very important when you're dealing, make sure you get a clean plate as good as possible. So that's important. And then shooting elements for compositing, yes. So it could be very, uh, for example, Kashmora, I guess, or even it could in Bahubali. We had a lot of, uh, have you seen, I'm sure people would have, you would have seen Bahu, uh, Katapa uh, backstabbing the Bahubali and there will be a lot of fire that will be going behind the back. The reason it's so realistic because we didn't use the stock, foot, stock footages from the internet. We actually shot the plates of the fire. Uh, we went and Duke was very, very much, you know, kind to shoot a lot of uh, fire plates for that. So that we have live plates shot as an element and we composite a live plates. Because even if you put the live, uh, uh, what do you call the uh, uh, CG based fire, it may not match in. So very important to have the lights goes on to give the fire scene and go back, shoot the plates, get the natural fire, key it off and then add some here and there, the CG fire that you are generating. And then it begins the realism. So if you go back and see the shot, the shot of, um, Katapa stabbing the Bahubali is actually it's a fully stock footage, uh, short stock footage for the sequence from the director and the DOP by themselves. So uh, you need to tell what you require, what is possible to achieve. Doing a fire element in the CGI takes a lot of volume to con uh, you know consume uh, and to render it off, then to comb. The, oh, they might say, I want like this, that. It may not be. No, it's going to take a lot of time. So it's better to shoot. If it's something, use the reason, shoot it. And you can see a lot of movies. Uh, if you go and check Michael Bay's movies, a lot of things are practically done. For example, the blast, the fire, uh, those are all done practically. And VFX enhance it more, adding uh, elements even inside more extra spark, extra uh, debris to enhance it. That's what VFX does. This. And so it looks like so realistic. So if you feel in your sequence, Elements is required. Talk to the director, talk to the DOP, uh, uh, and say we might require this element to be shot. If it's in the budget, go ahead and shoot. So these are the general elements we need to shoot: sparks, debris, explosion, 
and one of the good movie uh, you can watch is Kamara Sambhavam, the project I worked as an onset supervisor, where we shot almost everything practically possible. The blast is on location we tried and we enhanced in the post. So all the blast you see, it was all in the, the, the pump up area where it burst out from the ground. It was all on the live. And then we added the extra debris, smoke that jumps out, the, the swirls and everything it was in the post. But the impact, it is live. Yeah, then it's all about the post-production, uh, how it goes on. Then we have a must tweak it generally. So these are the general measuring tapes and these are the inclometers to check. And this is the tracking markers that I, I prefer it. And we have a laser level to check and we have uh, to check your straight lines. You have plum and bob and that's it. So what I recommend is like have your uh, color chart, have your camera data report what is required. These are the must have things in your hand if you are going for a shoot and track markers and length discussion chart, chrome ball and um, a gray, gray, gray board at least and uh, have a lighting diagram sheet for your, uh, you know, lighting portion paper. So this is in terms of the on shoot uh, planning and execution wise. Any doubts in this? Feel free to ask me because, you know, it's very important uh, chapter because we are starting with on, on shoot progress. If you have a passion of becoming VFX supervisor, you might end up as a data wrangler or as a VFX supervisor, you will land in the place where we need to do all this stuff. So if you have anything, ask. I'm holding any my... question, please ask. Holding the conversation for five seconds. We think so if you can have, please. Just put it in the chat box or directly you can ask. Good. So let me move forward. <clears throat> okay. As I was mentioning, uh, this is just like a tip for you guys where uh, I've seen a lot of profiles. Uh, uh, that comes as a fresher and there are a lot of stuff in the resume. There's something not, they hit one point what they want to be. They say, I do modeling, I do motion graphics, I'm good in After Effects, I'm good in Nuke, i good in modeling, i good in everything. Uh, but it's not that necessary. You have to be, you know, more specific what you are approaching for. So in that, um, first thing, let's see what, make sure what you want to be. Right? If you're unsure of what you want to become, it's very simple. If you're putting on a subject line, you are applying for a compositor, make sure you put everything based upon the compositor. What is important? Photography. Yes, you can put a photography. You can say you are an um, enthusiast in terms of uh, uh, lighting. Good. And you say you, are a good, you want to be a compositor. Better. All three points, tick mark for the compositor. And if you go and tell, hey, I'm good in modeling, I, I do this and I do that. And then you're saying you're a composer, right? You want to be a composer, but there are no other departments, which is next department or the previous department you're covered with. So have show some, some interest when someone reads your profile, they should feel like what your content you're putting in there relates to your subject. So compositor relates to the lighting, compositor relates to the photography. So if you have putting your passions of photography, yes, there's one checkpoint you have ticked and make sure that you are honestly your passion about that if you want to be a compositor. And then tell that you are interested in lighting. So these two things will make you feel like, yes, you want to become a compositor. People will think about your profile much more serious. So keep your subject clean and then make sure that what you want to become. There are many people who just, if you want compositor, they apply for compositing. Lighting, they apply for lighting. I have seen a profile, same guy apply for three, four departments. For what? No reason. Because he just want to be somewhere in the position. But please, if you are unsure of what you want to become, ask yourself from down the line. Many companies ask um, the when someone jumps from this company or another company, people ask what you want to become in the next five years. Where do you see yourself? Same question. Ask yourself how do you want yourself to be recognized after five years or three years? For example, I see a name Akshay. Akshay, how do you want to be like you want to be treated as a compositor after the end of three years, then you are a compositor. You should be applied for compositing. Or if you say, hey, people want to say like, I'm a good lighter, then apply for lighting. So 
make sure what you want to become in next three four years, and that should be your subject line, right? So let me randomly pick um, Chirag or what do you want to become? So we have exploits, right? So that's a big goal to be a VFX supervisor. What are the where do you want to start? That's the point. So like roto, okay. From start, okay. So when I lighting, okay. Ah, uh, see that's where roto compositing lighting. That's correct. But there is a hack, guys. Uh, I was talking to one of my friend who who came from UK. So there is a hack. People generally says. Um, Ah, pain is too bad, isn't it? Okay, anyway, I'll have it. People talk about roto. So people talk about roto, and people talk about paint, and then you have to become a Compositor. So, for example, Chirag says he wants to become a VFX supervisor, right? So, first he has to join as a roto artist. If you are joining as a roto artist, it will take at least from junior to at least mid, so that you can jump to paint. So, to get to your mid, you should at least work for three years, so that you become a mid artist. When you join in the paint, right? So, they will not put you from roto to comp. You have to go to the paint job. So, you have to go to the paint. At least you should be a mid-level artist again. Again, another three years. So six years to become a junior comp. Studios will take you as a junior comp. So you will start your junior comp level as in your seventh year, and then you have to go to another three years. At the end of tenth year, you become a mid compositor. Even though you have an experience of ten years, you still be considered as a mid compositor. And then senior to take another one or two years depends upon how you perform. Then the lead, then the supervisor. Correct. You can see, you can see, like twenty five, twenty six years goes hard to become a VFX supervisor. Right. If you start your career from here, I'm not saying this is absolutely wrong. I'm saying this is what we need to see. But there is a hack. What is a hack? Um, there are a um, lot of studios. Uh, example, MPC, Focus. Uh, they are conducting as something called as academy okay so academy means they have lighting and they have comp so when you join in lighting comp what happens is they will take you as a fresh comp junior comp if you go to the cg world so there is lighting and comp so you go as a junior lighter or junior comp from there you can jump to comp pc it's very easy to jump so or what i feel is it's not like a, a, a what do you call it, wrong method it's like a hack but what is it you may not know how to do the roto it is eventually very easy to get it done you have pain right which you can learn it if you if you give it yourself a study you can maximum learn it in one year very max right all there is a department for you guys to work on it right so don't stress more on this do something on creative Right, roto. There is no creative in it. What is the fun in it? Whereas paint, there is fun, but you can concentrate more on terms of creative job. Try to attack something junior comp when companies like this opens their spot for academy. It's the best way to go and join an academy as a junior comp or junior later from where you can start your career very easily. And uh, it's very very. um good if you can start picking up some very very different field for example dmp or you can say uh, uh cfx you would never believe cfx artists are the most demandable artists anywhere you go right there are no projects without the clock and per in terms of the uh, visual effects industry at the moment in the hollywood right if you see lot of companies post on cfx artists cfx artists cfx artists, because There are no CFX artists right now in India. Much, for example, if there are hundred thousand com compositors, 
there are only 15 in terms of ratio to that it is CF effects. Right? So if you jump in there, that's where you start giving yourself more demand. So check what you want to become, for example, Chira, a good that you want to become a VFX supervisor, I would say, check on the path, uh, derive your path, don't uh, go as it goes, that will not work, people say, you channelize your path, you say, I want to become like this in next two years, I need to become like this in next two years, channelize it. Yes, sir. Yep. Let's go back. Yeah, and uh, second thing, you, we are all creative people. We are not someone who is working for, you are looking for the job in IT industry where you put in the word document. Um, so have some minimalistic design. Uh, uh, I, would, I would like to show you some example what uh, I have done for one of the guy. I helped him with in getting an offer in job in, in focus. So he was uh, showing me this, uh, where, you know, uh, this is the resume, uh, where he has uh, put it across what he has learned, blah, 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 it went for two pages. I said, dude, why are you putting like this? Can you make it something more presentable, more creative instead of doing this? Because Word document, anyone can do it. I want you to be more, more clear and more good so that people, when you see, it looks good. And this is where we came up with the same template, but it's a single page and it looks more appealing. The information is here, you have it, you have your objective, you have your experience, education, everything, whatever, he has it here, it's here. It's here. Which one do you guys prefer? There is no big uh, designs that's done, gone through it. Just putting your text rightly, aligning your contents rightly, you can actually present your entire stuff properly. So what I would say is when you're preparing your resume, right? Put your time effort, not just in document type and give to the people. It's it, because it's your profile. People are, uh, this is your first impression to them, right? When you're applying it, don't be like uh, someone who just for the namesake, you give the resume, put your effort in showcasing what you want and uh, your, your uh, minimalistic design skills so that they know you are passionate about, about it. That's an example. As I was talking, I just want to show you. This is my recent resume. I have a habit of, you know, after every project, I just uh, update my resume. So this is my resume. I prepared it. So, yeah, keep it minimalistic. Show some passion on your work. Uh, be stand out because that makes them to give the impression because you are not there to personally tell them this is what this is what I am. So when you show. <laughs> the content right people will see it more get the points right so that they have the eyes to that <clears throat> oops and there are a lot of company portal as i was talking about mpc focus and um, even walt uh, disney those people are actually opening the academy uh, uh, uh have seen an academy like a year back uh, for international students also, where you need to show your contents, right? You might have your interviews and then they'll be picking for academy. Uh, uh, academy in MPC and Focus are successful because one of my friend I referred joined there, my junior joined there. So I know academy is successful and you can target very easily. So target for academies for your starting of your career. And uh, last thing is about your showing. Make sure you prepare your show that suits your sub subject. When you are putting yourself as a compositor, please put your compositing show -reel. Don't put a modeling show -reel there where you created a model. No, we don't want to see your model show -reel there. So always make sure if your subject is compositing, get even if it's two shots, okay. Get your two shots breakdown proper. That's all is required. And what they see in terms of your show -reel, very simple. Are you matching the colors right? That's all required. Whether your light direction is correct in terms of composition. If a subject lights comes through this, whether are you matching it properly? So that's more important. So are you doing it? Right. Your blacks, is it right? Your whites, blacks and whites. Yes, it's very important. Are you matching it there? Whether it sits in the environment. If there is a haze there, you are trying to add it. 
so this is very important as a junior level this is the basic they expect you to present it and second thing is make sure that you have your breakdown ready uh not the video breakdown i'm talking about technical breakdown how you have done the shot okay which is very important because generally people uh never give their uh, breakdown document but it's very important to give the breakdown document along with your break along with your show reel tell them that hey i started off this this shot has the complexity of this so i approached in this method i have uh, driven this tool or you might uh, used you might arrived a different tool altogether so i say like i have used these tool to achieve this output and uh, the output of this and you can show them how that output was before before and after for example there is a glow you have that before the glow after the glow the procedural glow so people oh yeah they will feel like interested saying like your profile for your two shots you have done a breakdown properly and say like you have done a case study of your own shots and telling them how you achieve the shots so what happens then you are giving them impression how passionate how good you are in terms of in taking ownership of your shots so that's very important to prepare your show reel so always prepare your te technical breakdown yeah so that comes to the conclusion and uh, when we talking about the breakdowns this is the gen this this one i didn't prepare it for this presentation and all this i have done it because i have done a breakdowns of my show reel when i did the show reel i did a breakdowns automatically in terms of you know you can see here narrative emotional visual goal what are the stuff that i have able to achieve it and uh, the before and after shots what was the elements that i need to do in the shots so what happens is it becomes easy when you send them like this document they will see how much efforts you are putting in your show reel how much it means to you to get the job how much it means the shots for you the sequence that you have done yourself so yeah so please prepare it even those two shots do it if even it's a student profile do it it's very important okay. then it's a show reel time you might be asking for a long almost one out 15 minutes i have been speaking and uh, you may be asking who who is this guy speaking a lot what is this work is like so i'm going to play my show reel so please check this out Let's share the song. Hello. Hello. Uh, I guess you, you can drop a message. Sir, so share the sound. Sir, sound is not coming. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry about that. Hmm, that's a good thing. So, new share, advanced computer audio share. Sorry, I need to start again. Okay. Can you hear it now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Sir, but uh, so we can't see the screen. We can't see the. We can't see the screen, sir. We can't see the videos. Okay, so I need to pause to check how the screen works. Share it now. If I play it, can you hear it? No sir. Okay, so now how we do it parallelly both? <laughs> That's something. After sharing the screen, you can share the song. Yeah, actually, I just share the screen here. After the sharing, I go to my. Oh, okay, got it. Share song. Share. Yeah, fine. Yes. <clears throat>
Oops. Yep. And uh, So officially we are coming to the end of the, can you hear me guys, can you? Yeah, yes yeah. yeah. sir. So officially we are coming to the end of the today's session. So any questions um, you can ask me, even from Ashwari, you can anything you can ask me. So I'd be happy to share some knowledge. Uh, sir, uh, you said about effects and uh, scripting, right? Yeah. Uh, where, is, uh, uh, where is it mainly focused? Where I didn't get it. Where should you? Uh, where the effect scripting is mainly focused, like simulation, cloth, like. Okay. See, simulation of cloth is different, right? FX, uh, at least be specialized in one top one type of an FX. Um, it could be water, it could be smoke, fire. Everything has its own challenge, uh, and there is no specific saying like you should be specialized in only one. As an FX artist, if you go, they expect you to be, you know, good in everything. Okay, start with uh, uh, basic effects. There are a lot of tutorials out there. I would suggest go to Houdini. Uh, uh, don't start with Maya. If you want basics, try to see what's happening in Maya. But most of the companies move towards Houdini for the effects because of the procedural methods. So, yeah. Uh, yes, sir. But don't worry about the scripting part, which you learn it, but start with a basic understanding of how you know what is required to calculate it. Okay. And your real world physics uh, is the one which is what is going to calculate in the FX. So you should understand that technicality terms, how, you know, a scaling down the object. For example, you have a set which is like um, uh, 100 feet building is collapsing. Uh, practically building a hundred feet building in the CG and making it to collapse in the effects. God knows when it can collide and uh, come down. So basically the real time world, they'll scale it down. Entire world scene will come to 0.15 so that that feet will be in terms of 15 centimeters. So there will be some relativity scale that happens in terms of effects. So you should understand those terms. So based upon that is what your effects will function. So. Uh, understand your basics, right? That's more important. Yeah, understand, sir. Thank you. Anyone yeah. else? Anyone else is having any question? No, sir. Cool. Okay, so. We'll Today's session 
we'll wrap yeah, up we'll uh, wrap up and we'll continue from uh, tomorrow same timing 5:30 yeah okay so sir will be showing some case studies and the cgs more uh, uh, deep into the cgs right yep. so yep. yeah so see you tomorrow guys then okay so we'll continue from here only uh, tomorrow same timing 5:30 okay yes, thank sir. you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir have a nice day bye bye